Thank you so much, and uh, thanks so much for having me here. This is, this is really an honor and a, a great joy for me to be here at Tiny Desk. So uh, I'm a big fan. Um, so I'm, I'm playing this project that I, that I call Natural Machines. And it's called Natural Machines because I really like to think of music as living at the intersection of the algorithmic and the spiritual. I mean, a lot of the art I love is kind of a combination of, on the one hand, emotions and intuition, and on the other hand, maybe in, in equal part, uh, rules and constraints. I mean, people have been making art at the intersection of those two things for, of those two forces, you know, for thousands of years. And, um, and my idea with Natural Machines was to separate these things out. So I'm doing free improvisation here. I'm... Um, Everything I'm playing, I'm just trying to make up in the moment and just be present in the music. Um, but the way the computer is reacting is governed by rules. And these are programs that I've written um, that take what I've played, and in real time, they come up with an answer. 
And it's just like really simple rules I've written. Um, for instance, in that last one, there's an axis of symmetry in the middle of the piano, and everything I play on one side is reflected on the other side. Super simple, but it leads to musical problems that then lead to new music. And that's what gets me really excited about it. That's the power of, of constraints. Um, I should say something about this instrument. This is a Yamaha disc clavier, and it's a completely acoustic piano, but it can play all by itself. Um, so yeah, as soon as I play something, it goes into my computer. These programs I've written shoot back notes to the piano for it to play in response. And since I'm improvising, I'm reacting to what the piano is playing too. So it's this feedback loop. And the programs are also sending data to these um, other apps I've written that generate a visual representation of the music as it's happening. And this is all in real time. Nothing's pre-recorded or, or pre-planned. So this, this next one I call tremolo. Tremolo is, is, um, is this thing in music when a note is repeated really quickly, like on a violin when he's going. Um, and you can do it on a piano too, but it's a lot harder on the piano than on the violin. And it's impossible to do more than 10 notes at once if you're just playing the piano. And so this is, this is an algorithm where I'm, I'm exploring what it sounds like if you do a lot more than 10 at once. Thank you. I was, I'm doing kind of super short versions of these because I want to give you a, a taste of the project, but uh, this is actually something I put out on YouTube. Uh, there's like 11 tracks on YouTube, uh, full free improvisations with, with, with each one of these algorithms. Um, and this next one I want to play you is, um, is really dear to my heart. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Just checking here. Um, is really dear to my heart. It's, um, it's all about harmonic ratios. It's a, it's, I, got, I started getting interested in this idea of what makes two sounds sound good together, right? So if I, if I play um, those two notes, they belong together, right? I mean, there's a sense that they're almost, they're like family. And so it turns out that uh, Pythagoras discovered many thousands of years ago um, that tones that sound good together tend to be related in whole number ratios. So that means that, for example, with this interval, which is a perfect fifth, in the, in the time that the lower one vibrates twice, the upper one vibrates three times. And with a major third, something like that, in the time that the lower one vibrates uh, four times, the upper one vibrates five times. And that's the math behind pretty much all the music we love. And that's pretty amazing. You can express it as rhythm too. like. That's four to five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. And that's exactly the same as this, just faster. I mean, slower. 
just a lot slower. <laughs> and if you speed it up, you actually hear that. And that just blows my mind. And, and I wanted to find a way to, to uh, represent this idea visually. Um, so basically, I just started mapping those numbers on, on the axis of a three-dimensional object. And, and you get these amazing results. Like this is actually a major triad. Uh, I've been 3D printing these. Uh, so that's that sound. And those are ratios 6 to 5 to 4. And this is a minor triad like that. Can you hear the difference? It's a minor triad. That's uh, 10 to 12 to 15. And I think you can really hear how that more complex sound makes a more complex shape. Um, so anyway, I wrote this program that um, turns everything I play in my left hand into those shapes in real time. And I'm just improvising. Thank you so much. This last one is uh, just about a super simple idea. It's like taking one note and the computer responding either up or down. Um, yeah, thank you so much. This is constant motion. <laughs>